Hello Young Professionals, uh, Eddie Chustovich here, the Editor-in-Chief of Impact by IEEE Young Professionals. Today we have a very special guest here with us, that's Dr. Andreas Eckhard from the German Aerospace Center in Berlin. Andreas is the Head of Department of the Optical Sensor and Electronics Division within the DLR. Uh, give you a little bit of background on Dr. Andreas Eckhard. You know, he's a scientist at the Institute of Space Research of Academy for Sciences of the GDR and Department of Optical Signal Processing from 1988 to 1992. From 1992 to 1999, he was a scientist at the German Aerospace Institute for Space Sensor Technology. And from then on, he became the head of the division and is now managing the entire uh, Department of Optical Information Systems at the DLR. So Andreas, so welcome to La Trobe University and uh, thank you for taking the time to speak to us here today. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your illustrious career, you know, where did you actually start, you know, what did you study and what drew you to engineering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I start uh, in the late 80s and so the funny thing is that I I'm, I'm start with uh, on spy satellites from Russia and nevertheless now I'm working not just on spy satellites uh, and the western side, no, we are more or less concentrated more on, uh, I would say, um, scientific work on remote sensing. And in particular, we are working on new detector designs. We combine silicon with nanotechnology uh, designs as well in the infrared level for fire detection, etc., etc. So when you were a little boy growing up in East Germany, what yeah. was it that fueled your interest in science and engineering? Uh, the first I start, um, maybe I was uh, seven or eight, and uh, I built up my own radio. That was an AM radio, and mm. uh, then the FM radio came up, and the, I think, a uh, low frequency amplifier, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in the end, uh, I think the fascinating of computer technology, computer science, we built up the own computer and uh, in this time frame we went under CPM. And, uh, but we looked also to MS-DOS or to Linux and uh, that was fascinating. Absolutely. Now, tell us about your work. What exactly do you do at the German Aerospace Center? Uh, in the German Aerospace, I'm heading a department of um, optical sensors and electronics, and uh, in particular, we do we drive new designs in optical sensors, focal plane designs, and um, and we combine this with electronics because our vision is that uh, the combination with uh, detectors, electronics will be fused. Fused means we calculate. Um, or we find out information on pixel level that's not very normal um, uh, for instance we're doing this for lightning but uh, also for others so that we have intelligent pixels where each pixel to each other are communicate and uh, here we are looking more or less also in the biology and uh, find new things and uh, work together also with some, I would say, specialists in medical science, etc. So over the years you've worked on some absolutely amazing projects. Can you highlight perhaps two or three projects that really stand out, um, global recognized projects? Mm -hmm. um, and one in particular was we was responsible, I was a project manager for the EDS-40, the Airborne Digital Sensor for Leica company. Uh, it was amazing because it was for airborne and we were thinking that spaceborne is hard. We didn't recognize how hard that for a commercial company is. <laughs> and, uh, and, in, and then of course the Comsats project, Comsats 3, Comsats 3A was uh, very fascinating because it, it's an uh, 0.5 meter system from uh, 520 kilometer orbit that uh, that you can see, uh, I see to my students uh, that you can see, I think the clock on the Frauen Church in Munich from Berlin, wow. and that's it's very exciting to work on this particular optical systems. Now, what are some of the most recent projects? What are you currently working on? 
Uh, we are currently working on, I, I would say, uh, one is the DASIS project, which, uh, which we also Latorp is uh, involved in, and uh, you are doing the uh, a very good FPGA design for us, uh, where we are uh, working on a hyperspectral instrument for, uh, for the ISS uh, under the leadership of the Teledyne company. It's uh, German aerospace instruments, what we delivered on the MUSES platform or to the ISS. That's just very fascinating because there we are also using new technologies in order to find new informations from, uh, from vegetation and also land cover. And uh, that is one side. The other side, uh, we're working in particular in complete new silicon detector designs called CMOS TDI. We are working together with the Fraunhofer Association in, in Germany, where we are more focused, I would say, um, in integration between the detector and electronics for um, high-resolution satellite systems. What would you say is the biggest or one of the biggest challenges when you know, designing electronics and optics that is going out into space? Uh, the, the biggest challenge is, uh, I would say it's also obvious, is the balance between uh, thermal control, temperature and performance. Uh, under some circumstances uh, you have uh, trouble with the EMC problems in orbit, under some circumstances you have sun illumination on the one side, it's very hot. On the other side, it's very cool. So you need to be very clever with the thermal control design, and uh, and and of course uh, the satellite is flying uh, seven kilometer per second roundabout on the ground speed. It's very fast. So when it is flying at that speed, uh, you know how important is it to dodge uh, space debris? <laughs> <laughs> uh, space debris. <laughs> Is, uh, is one of the biggest issues, uh, I would say, in, in, in the next few, few years or in a decade, because we have a lot of space debris in orbit and the big satellites are dancing around the base space debris. But if a space debris hits the satellite, of course you can, you can lose the satellite immediately. Absolutely. And in, in terms of space debris, or just some statistics about um, satellites in general, how many satellites are really up there? Oof, I, I'm not pretty sure, but uh, it's a couple of thousand. And, uh, and we have a couple of 20,000 or more uh, particle and space debris under different orbits. And you can imagine so that the speed, uh, we pointed out, the so 7 kilometer per second, it's just one direction, so that the speed of this particle could be 14 kilometer per second. And uh, if that weight a couple of grams uh, the, the, and hits the satellite, you, you are big in trouble. So given that there are so many objects out in space and space debris, um, what are countries around the world doing to mitigate these types of problems? Ah, yeah, there is an international group under the leadership called uh, uh, SSA, a Space uh, Situation Awareness. And this SSA program is, I would say, from the, from the leaders of the countries are, are well known. And that is under, under this agronym that's addressed. And we are working continuously with uh, colleagues in, in US, but also in, in Russia and uh, in, on the Western or Eastern side, because it's a global problem. And uh, when you lost, I think, the investment in space, I can tell you, you don't see the weather anymore. You don't see <laughs> a couple of other things. Now, I'm quite interested about a few of your projects in particular. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the DASIS project that you're currently working on? You know, how did that whole collaboration, first of all, with Teledyne start, and mm -hmm. then, of course, with Latrobe University? Uh, Teledyne got, uh, I think, the MUSES project. MUSES is a platform on the ISS. Uh, with a two-axis stabilized platform and uh, Teledyne asked for good ideas and, uh, and instruments and DLR in particular will deliver a hyperspectral instrument with 235 channels and, uh, and this instrument will be delivered to Teledyne maybe in a year from now. 
and uh, we will as that's a little bit complicated because the ISS will be operated the assembly of the platform with a robotic arm so that we go to the to the Japanese uh, lock and from there we have a transient uh, with a robotic arm to, to the platform. Um, Teledyne now uh, sold uh, one instrument that is more or less the uh, the basis instrument and uh, this particular instrument we work together with the Latrobe University based on the knowledge last year I was here as a lecturer of the summer school and uh, we recognize the uh, I think the experiences of the scientists in Latrobe that uh, Latrobe is very good also in engineering of FPGAs and in particular we uh, we was trying to to implement this FPGA by our own. The trouble was we don't have the resources right now because of the uh, a lot of the projects, and this was the reason because of the very good experiences of La Trobe. Uh, we shift this particular work to the University of La Trobe. So the FPGA in this instance, what what role is it performing in this particular project? Uh, that's very important because um, uh, the main focus of this development is the control of the mass memory unit which of course determines the data rate and the data rate is around about a gigabit per second uh, uh, in orbit which of course it's not so normal but for hyperspectral instruments with a lot of channels it's normal and we have to store it, uh, we have to be uh, in a position where also uh, we can rely on the, on the mass memory system and uh, this system um, from the hardware point of view will be delivered by DLR and the software uh, is coming from, from La Trobe University and VHDL. Now that is one of your projects. It, it just happens to be that you're working on a lot of satellite-based yeah. projects. Are there any projects that you've worked on or are currently working on that are not satellite-based instruments? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very funny. In, in the past, I digitized all the movies. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, it was a very exciting time. But uh, of course, now I think the digitization is not necessary anymore because the the detector-based systems on HDTV is uh, it's given so that it's not uh, real uh, a, a big deal anymore. But um, today we are working also with um, in situ measurements. Uh, in situ measurements means not this is on based on satellite, based on robots, where we have Raman and Lips uh, spectrographs on board. Uh, to measure on planet and, and planetary uh, exploration experiments in situ the behavior on the surface of the, of the, of the planet. That's and that's it. Uh, it's uh, quite amazing what those instruments can uh, tell us now. Yes, yeah, that's just unbelievable. So based on all of this information that's being collected, uh, so information from these satellites, uh, in particular from the, the DESIS instrument, what sort of byproducts can we see as a result of that information that's being gathered? Uh, I think in, in particular for, for DESIS we hope that uh, we can have here, uh, we find some algorithms for food protection and also agriculture, I would say monitoring. And uh, so that we can have also here the, the possibility to prove the atmospheric models, but uh, in, in the opposite way around, uh, also to measure fluorescence uh, from arcs uh, in large cities, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, and we hope to get uh, uh, here more information because it's under investigation, and that is also the reason that the hyperspectral instrument works not like a typical hyperspectral instrument works, because we are looking for new applications and things. So I think one of the biggest challenges for farmers in general and agricultural scientists and plant scientists is yeah. the, the difficulty of replicating what happens in a lab where they can easily monitor and measure yeah. and collect information but then trying to replicate that on a much larger scale 
you know, hectares, yeah. uh, kilo hectares of yeah. land. So yeah. these types of satellites and this sort of information that's collected could complement the research work that is going on inside laboratories. Definitely. The, uh, what, what we're typically doing is uh, to, to compare the laboratory work uh, with, I would say, with farmers. Uh, we have their in situ uh, measurements. We have also test fields in Germany, but spread over the whole world. And uh, we have UVs aircrafts uh, where we are also able to collect data on under different altitude, under different uh, conditions, and uh, we fly over with the satellites. Why we are doing this? Because uh, when you figure out an algorithms and you investigate, you have to be sure that it's uh, it's uh, it's a proven algorithm because. In the end, it's an operational scenario, so that it's uh, independent under the illumination conditions the algorithm has to work, independent under the atmospheric conditions the algorithm has to work. And this is uh, the challenge, and that is why we are working so concentrate on, on this particular thing. It's amazing how far, when you say agriculture and agricultural science has come, it's no longer just uh, someone out in the field taking yeah. a few measurements, uh, the instrumentation is now so advanced that it's yeah. really helping advance the field itself. And uh, maybe last of all, you know, tell us, where do, you, where do you see this research field going in the next five to ten years, or maybe even twenty years? What is the direction that we're currently taking? Uh, if, 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 if you can look maybe ten years uh, uh, in the future, I would say uh, then you are a winner on the stock market, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, when I look to the technique, I, I, I believe that the amazing bunch of data what we generate with hyperspectral instrument but also with high resolution instruments. The main challenge is that the uh, satellite will be in future or the system independent UV or satellite or aircraft has to calculate on board and has to communicate not to communicate as a telecommand and telemetry system has to communicate as a network so that you have maybe a, a sensor network where the automatic thinking is implemented so that you have a task in the network and the mm. network is doing something. And this uh, that maybe will be ongoing. You mentioned uh, earlier the SSA and when the space debris hits the satellite, etc. Because when we lost the satellite, that's uh, in the sensor network is just one the sensor defect. Uh, the network of itself can work, so that the redundancy point of view is much much uh, higher, and also the system of system mm -hmm. approach, so that the satellite looks uh, has communicate information to the UV. Mm -hmm. Just for example, we find a fire. You have to go with the UV in in a particular area to to prove this something like this uh, so that it's very small communication it's not necessary to send data down and this is something which uh, will be developed in the next few years i guess given that so many more satellites are going up uh, will it become harder and harder to to navigate through this debris but also you know ensure that we have enough uh, yeah. you know space out there that we're not having collisions on a daily basis that's true um, and my last question really for you is a little bit of advice. Young people, so students and young professionals, what advice can you give them if they're interested in this particular field of research? Um, it's, it's amazing because um, when you see that your work is flying and uh, that is whatever contribution means, it's a small contribution to the society, your work, you're feeling better. <laughs> and uh, this is something which is um, spectacular. And uh, I can say independent if you are working on mass or on computer science, on engineering or biology or agriculture or whatever. All these fields are integrated in the system design of satellites. You need each particular expertise and this is something which is unique for, for space. And uh, this is something for, for young people, which I, I think which could be motivate very good. Absolutely. Andreas, thank you so much for thank spending you. a little bit of time here with us today. There you have it, young professionals. Uh, uh, Dr. Andreas Eckhardt here speaking to us about satellites, uh, German projects currently 
on the way. <laughs>